title of this uh, project is Further Application of Lightweight Hinge for Helicopter Duration Models and uh, uh, for 29 millimeter motors. Uh, so go ahead, switch. So here's just a quick outline of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, where I came from on this project, how I got to it, uh, a little bit on the how to of how it's done, a little bit on results of G helicopter at NARAM uh, this year, a little bit about close flight analysis, and then a few comments about the future of the project. Okay. Okay, so the purpose of this <coughs> project is to improve the performance of helicopter models. So this happens to be the first helicopter model I built. Uh, it's not a rotor rock, which is the design that I fly now, uh, but it's very similar to it. And uh, the way a, a lot of uh, helicopter models are constructed is to use model aircraft control surfaced hinges, and then you strap them down with thread and CA. You wind up with a structure that's uh, kind of draggy. You know, it's out in the airstream, it's kind of irregularly shaped, and it's heavy. So I wanted to try to do something uh, a little different. And basically, the approach that I've taken is to use a material called Tyvek, and it, if you've ever gotten a, a FedEx package, uh, Tyvek is the material that's used for those. Tyvek is a polypropylene type material. It's kind of a, a random fiber uh, fabric almost, and it will <coughs> absorb uh, epoxy. So, uh, and I'll, I'll be around afterwards if anybody wants to look at these things. I don't want to pass them around take too much time. Uh, okay, so go on. Uh, so this is a little bit of the how-to. The uh, way I do these things is I prepare a helicopter blade and I take a laminate a piece of Tyvek onto the blade after I've cut it at an eight degree angle. So I have two pieces, laminate a piece of Tyvek on it with epoxy and then uh, usually I pile a bunch of books up on it and uh, to apply pressure to it so you get a nice even uh, penetration of the Tyvek with the epoxy. Uh, okay, so this is just kind of the next step in the process um, where you put the, uh, the stops for the, for the rotors on and uh, the hooks for the rubber bands. Then hit the next one. Okay, uh, skip over that. Okay, so uh, mostly I've done this for small helicopters like this. Um, this, would, this would be one you'd fly on a, on a quarter A or a half A or an A. Uh, but I wanted to do bigger models because I, I wanted a reliable method of attaching the rotors to the helicopter blade or to the helicopter and, uh, and have it work in a reliable fashion. Now, one of the things that I encountered early on in this, and if you'll back up one, yeah, that's it. Okay, there's a failure mode that you run into with this stuff. Uh, the blades, when they deploy, uh, there's, there's a peel force that's generated. If you look at this, you know, it, there's a, a force that wants to peel the Tyvek off of the surface. So how to stop that? So, uh, um, let's see, go back, no, go back, yeah, go back, go forward, yeah, okay, right there. So, the thing that I've come up with recently is uh, apply a piece of wafer glass, and you can vary the width, of the width and the thickness of that depending on how big of a blade you've got. Um, for, uh, for a small helicopter like this, I'll just use, you know, like, uh, O1 wafer glass, and that's that that gives enough stiffness to that joint that it won't peel off the surface. For my G helicopter design, it went a little thicker. I believe it's O2O 0 is what I used, and I went wider. It's a, it's now an inch wide instead of being like a quarter inch wide. 
Uh, now, when I built this model, which is in the box in pieces now, <coughs> I did make one flaw in the, in the design of the hinge. I didn't give enough space this way. Uh, so I had to go backwards to the wrapping with thread, except I used 100 pound test Kevlar thread in order to make sure this part of the hinge <coughs> didn't peel off the surface. Uh, go ahead and go forward. Uh, to make sure it wasn't going to peel off uh, during deployment, I did some ground scale deployment tests. So what I would do, you can kind of see it here, I would tie the rotors down, put the rubber bands on, then walk up with a pair of scissors and just cut the string and then see if the blades would deploy and whether or not it was going to peel off of the surface. And I did that several times with this model and uh, didn't have any problems with peeling. <coughs> so, brought it with me to Nara. Unfortunately, another failure mode came in. Play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what, what happened was, um, this model came out a bit heavier than what I intended and uh, flew it on a cluster of two F20-4 motors. They both lit uh, and everything was working beautifully. It was ascending. It made it all the way through the boost into the coast and then at the top it arced over into the wind and down it came and I did not have enough deployment force on the rotors. However, I did get one nice little piece of data. The One of the hinges totally survived the impact, so still completely functional and uh, it worked. So the design is a success even with, a, with 29 millimeter G motors and uh, uh, just have to get a bit more deployment force on those rotors. I'm going to have to use, you know, <coughs> hydraulic pistons or something uh, to get it to work. So that's kind of where I'm at now. Uh, I've done 13 millimeter uh, motors. I've done 18 millimeter motors successfully. Uh, now I've done a G motor. I've never done uh, D or E. Uh, I just haven't had the opportunity to uh, build one. Uh, the way I've been running this project is pretty much every time there's an Aram and there's a helicopter event at Aram, I build it Two and I use this technique. Two. Uh, so future, uh, what could be done uh, other than you know getting better deployment force on the rotors? Uh, there are some other materials I could probably use instead of Tyvek, so I might play with that a bit. Um, and I certainly want to try doing uh, 24 millimeter motors at some point. And uh, I, I think maybe that the technique is to the point where I might write an article for sport rocketry on this. And that might be a, a good next step. Get the technique out into the community and uh, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's basically where I'm at. Uh, I don't think I used up too much time. Questions? So John, thanks. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, looking at if, if, if you picture hub blade and you've got the tie back hinge and I only have two hands so I can't visualize that. Was there, was there any point in the development process where 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 it would shift or where you'd have a, a lateral displacement and, and I've, I've never so I've never seen that effect uh, although you know if you crash it into the ground you can well, you're going to expect off. a certain amount of displacement under those circumstances but now. yeah mo most of the forces <laughs> is in line with the you know the axial length of the rotor <clears throat> rather than uh, a, a sideways torque and even when it's rotating, it wasn't experienced. You didn't. Well, you wouldn't have been able to see it. Yeah, I, I, I. Most of the damage, I think. I mean, I haven't 
done an or onboard <coughs> video camera or anything, but I think most of the damage occurs, if you get that peel damage, occurs at the moment when the blade deploys and it comes up, being pulled up with that rubber band. Okay. I think. But I, I can't be sure of that. Yeah. Onboard video, that would be, I don't know how you'd go about it. There's a thought. Yeah. Thank you, John. You said one hinge survived. What did the other two hinges look like? Well, <laughs> let's see here. Pretty much torn so in the half. the Tyvek tore. Tyvek, yeah. Just That's pretty half. tough to tear that stuff. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know you could look for a fabric uh, with uh, with better tear resistance. That's a possibility. Uh, I missed the part. What do you bond the uh, Tyvek to the balsa with? Epoxy. Thirty minute epoxy. And that works. It works um, mm -hmm. because uh, well, you know you 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 have to have that fiberglass strip because. Right. Right there, that's where all the force is, right at the edge of that hinge. Um, and if you don't have something to stiffen it up, it'll just peel Flex. right off the first time you deploy it. Um, a suggestion, I've dealt with materials like this before. Um, in pizza, we call it docking, but they make um, leather tools. It's a wheel with needles for punching holes in leather and stuff like that. Okay. Super fine needles, basically you <coughs> dock the Tyvek through the balsa wood, so you have little perforations just stay away yeah. from the actual hinge, and then your epoxy can actually penetrate the layers of Tyvek and balsa. Yeah, that would give you uh, a less lot peeling. better uh, uh, a bond layer, if you will. And less peeling, since the yeah. layers will well, be attached. That might be interesting to look at. Um, I, didn't, no, I don't have a 